good evening sir good, yeah good evening to all and hearty welcome to yet another episode of our uh, 1971 war heroes today we are going to listen from squadron leader vishwas marthi soman sir the helicopter pilot who flew the helicopter of uh, general jagdish singh during 71 war now he is going to join shortly good evening sir good evening uh, squadron leader soman sir okay sir welcome uh, to our uh, webinar sir uh, squadron leader vishwas marthi soman sir so he joined in indian air commission in air force 19 uh, 67 december 31st he was from 98 corps helicopter pilot and uh, retired from service on 30th april 1976 after 19 years and uh, he played a crucial role in flying the helicopter of general jagdish singh during that uh, 71 war operations and i think it will be interesting to learn some of the major events of war as he was with the, the, the then i think uh, with the general uh, jagdish singh sir you are welcome to this webinar today yeah thank you you may start your call sir squadron leader vishwas maruti soman sir so from there onward you can take a sir how and why did you join indian air force and what was your role during 71 war sir so that uh, we can get enlightened through your uh, experiences of war okay right from the childhood i was interested in flying and the only way i could join was through air force okay sir when, when i had passed out from my school i immediately started my efforts to join the air force and one day in the meantime i was playing basketball and i was playing nationals from maharashtra state i okay. was a state player but in the meantime i got selected for air force and we started our training initially i had passed out as a transport pilot but air force needed helicopter pilots so yeah. i opted for it and joined the helicopter squads helicopter flying is not only interesting but it's it's very different you know from normal flying anyway let's come to 1971 ops yes sir yeah i was posted in bareilly and one day we were asked to proceed to calcutta to the war had just begun on 3rd we yeah. were moved on 3rd to come to calcutta we came to barakpur as our base and then every morning we used to report to dum dum calcutta airport yeah. and suddenly we found that we were in the midst of the top uh, army brass like general jagjit singh general uh, a marshal diwan used to come there and they used to discuss and come on board and we were supposed to follow the war front and let them see as to what is going on in actual front you know where the pakistani army and our armies were meeting we were progressing along as our army was advancing and there came a day when we were uh, meeting you know on the banks of padma river padma is the same as ganga okay in bangladesh it is called padma okay pakhi army was on the northern side and indian uh, sorry in, and indians were coming from west and south so we were flying from calcutta jessor which was already captured by indian army and then proceeding towards dhaka yeah. so in the meantime we met general uh, arora said we must go as forward as possible we were actually seeing both the armies fighting with each other and the shells or the firing going on either side okay okay that was uh -huh. some experience that was yeah. some experience we found yeah. and during all this time thought of you know danger never touched us because okay. we were never experienced you know as to the war front what okay. actually happens in a war i mean it's a new it was a new experience we were not scared we were advancing an odd shell or a bullet you know was whiz passing us but we continued our uh, recce you know okay and this carried on for 3 4 5 days from 3rd onward towards the end of the war which was 16th okay continuously On flying 15th, sir yeah we were flying every day from morning till evening around 4:35 because it the uh, sun sets early in the early. east yes sir so as the sun was setting we used to come back to calcutta park the helicopter and come back to mess 
on 15th we were told that you have to proceed to dum dum early morning around 5:30 we didn't know what was there in uh, front of us but uh, we were told that you have to take general jacob to dhaka okay we didn't know because the war had not ended the firing was still going on and uh, we took off me and my co-pilot we both took off and uh, first flew to jessor which was captured by our indian army yeah. we refueled by barrels and took off again now here we since we were aware that paki army was spread all over bangladesh we had to be careful so we climbed to 10000 feet okay and uh, we had to be careful and yeah. then proceeded towards dhaka we came over dhaka we found dhaka started circling there and we found there were lots of pakistani troops which were all over the airport okay they were at least we found the whole area covered by them okay. and they were and you can see very clearly even at 10000 feet the weather was clear we could see their arms their uniforms and everything you know and they were sort of disturbed people you know sir so it wasn't very safe to come down somehow the general jacob said that we have to locate a un car you know un vehicle sir united nations vehicle sir if they come there we go down otherwise we go back to jessor okay somehow after about 10 minutes of circling we found the un vehicle coming there and they waved a flag towards us white flag okay that was a sign we knew that we can go down slowly circling down in about 5 8 to 10 minutes we came we, yeah. we were still judging whether to land or not they had cleared some area our army un people were around so we landed in in the middle there very close to their car so was trying to come all of them were armed they had guns in their hand and what not any other things you know which they were carrying sir so we were quite anxious you know and alarmed but okay. the un people say don't worry i mean they can easily say don't worry but uh, they have no control over those troops no no were you in contact with them sir arctic kind of thing no no there was no arctic contact because uh, the dhaka airport had completely packed up there was no one working in dhaka atc which which of course we came to know later because even we went up the atc also on the next day so general jacob met the un people and he got into their car and pushed off okay we two pilots were just left alone there okay <laughs> we were so so shocked you know that Sir. what is what's happening to us <laughs> with all these troops 80 90000 troops surrounding us uh-huh. and they were they were very uh, disturbed okay so we were wondering i mean we had no choice now so we just sat inside the helicopter after every 10 minutes we used to come out and sort of uh, signal them go back go back go back <laughs> okay piche hato piche hato because they could understand hindi okay and this carried on till almost 4 o'clock in the evening my god okay I- i'm sure we must have lost at least 10 pounds each you know of our weight <laughs> okay because it's not a joke to be surrounded yeah, by yeah so scary it's so so scary situation yeah somehow by 4 o'clock suddenly uh, some muktibaini people and their cars came and we had some knowledge that uh, or we could guess that something must be happening li- as far as the liberation of bangla east pakistan is concerned okay sir so they came to us and we knew, we knew muktibaini they were differently dressed okay. they were not armed okay they came to us and they said we are the mukti baini people don't worry about these troops come mm-hmm. with us i said what about the helicopter he okay. said we will keep our 20 people they will guard us here and they will guard the helicopter sir don't worry our army is entering now and they will look after these troops okay so they got us into the car and from there procession through the town started the bangla people were all coming out on the roads and they oh. found 
that these people were shouting at them that they are the saviors, they are the saviors. <laughs> and people wanted to touch us, they wanted to <laughs> hug us, they wanted to kiss us. Okay. That giving giving a heroic, heroic welcome. Okay. Yeah. So we got a great welcome. Sir. So slowly our procession went to the race course where Sir. the surrender ceremony was going to take place. So it was on we 15th, sir. It was on, you were, one day before 16th, you were there. Yes. No, okay. on 16th only, we okay. reached there. On 16th only, right, sir. Yeah. So, that was the first ever helicopter or an aeroplane landing at Dhaka. Okay. And which was safely, the pilots were safe and they were being processed, uh, in a procession being taken to the race course. Then we met the general, General Arora and General Jacob. They told us, you brought us here. Please stand in front of the table okay. where the surrender <laughs> ceremony will take place. Sir. So, we stood five feet from the table. People started gathering around. Okay. Indian Army people came. Air Marshal Diwan came. Admiral Nanda came. So, all those VIPs came and, and the other Mukti Bhaini top brass also came. Okay. And then, the you know, everyone knows how the ceremony proceeded. Yes, sir. So, we were the witness who saw it right in front of us. Oh, that's really great, uh, sir. So great. Of that you. was yes. some moment, you know. I'll never forget this. I still remember it as if it's happened yesterday and I'm seeing it, you know. Okay. So, that's how did you feel, sir? Great. That was a great feeling. Okay. I mean, you, you are sort of witnessing the mm -hmm. victory of an army, you know, or sir. a military and you are one of them. Yes, sir. Yeah, being so, part of it. Yes, that sir. That was a great feeling. That okay. was a real great feeling. So, the, you yeah. think about Krishnamurti, sir, was there only? Did you know yeah, him? Yeah, I never saw him. <laughs> but, I he's never the, saw him. He, but he's in the frame of the surrender ceremony. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like he is in the frame, but I did yes, not see him. <laughs> okay, sir. In fact, I met my school friend from Pune, okay. whom I had not met, you know, almost for 30 years. My God, okay. He he came from the army and I was from the Air Force. Okay. And we called we called each other the same names. We used to call each other when we were youngsters, you know. <laughs> okay. So great feeling. Yeah, that was a great feeling. Right, sir. Okay. Then of course uh, I had varied experience in the Air Force. Sir. Apart from Air Force, I flew in the Air Force for nineteen years. But outside I flew for twenty six years. My God, 26. So, and total 45 years of uh, flying experience. Absolutely. Almost almost 48 years, you know. My God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is so much. And, yeah. And not once I was taken off flying. I was okay. flying fit for all those 48 years. So, really great, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was flying offshore oil. I used to land on oil rigs. And uh, almost 30 years... I went through the Bombay monsoons, which okay. is the most terrifying monsoons for helicopters. I did more than 60,000 deck landings on oil rigs. My God. How did you maintain your health in a great shape all these years? It's a discipline. It's a discipline kind of thing. You have to maintain your exercises. You have to eat controlled eating and exercise is the main thing. Okay. You can never relax, you know, in life. Yes, if you want to stay fit, mm -hmm. you have to exercise. Okay. I'm a hill climber. I'm a trekker. Okay. I've so done ad adventurous I've personality. Done, I've done more than half the Himalaya on foot. My God. Okay. Great. Everest Base Camp, mm -hmm. Napurna, Gauri Shankar. Okay. All these places I've been. Really? The whole Ladakh, whole Leh and Ladakh, I've traveled on foot. Okay. <laughs> and I still do trekking at the age of 77. My God. So, really great. You are so passionate <laughs> to such a great health. So, that's that's how is my my story. Okay, sir. What is the happiest occasion or flying moment in Indian Air Force, sir? I mean, as I can recall, this is the most or uh, the happiest moment of winning okay. a war, you know. Winning yeah, a yeah. war and sir. be present there, you know. Okay. So, so present that is at the, the historical event. Moment. Yes. And it's a historical event. Yes, sir. And you're part of that history. 
really great sir really great mr yeah. youtube but thank you thank you the what is the most challenging flight for you sir sorry of uh, indian air force challenging sorry most enjoyable Cha- enjoyable I, is over challenging i always loved flying i never i never look back you know when flying I, okay uh, every flight i enjoyed every flight okay. i enjoyed the way i should enjoy it to the utmost you know that's really great <laughs> I cannot single out a flight because even okay. when I was doing offshore flying, I used to fly almost seven hours a day. My God! Uh. I used to do three flights of two hours each. Plus so passionate. Little more. So passionate about flying. <laughs> Very passionate about flying. Great, sir. So, the what is the most challenging flight or uh, shorty for you, sir? Challenging the shorty in Indian Air Force. In the Air Force, there are many challenging flights. Many. Sir. in the himalayas where high altitude when you take the helicopter to a high altitude landing sir. helipads which are more than 15000 feet sir. you know the characteristics of the helicopter completely changes all sir. the responses are very slow because okay. the air is rarefied so that flying is very very tricky okay, and sir. it it really challenges your skill so those are the flights you know and there are many flights like that which are okay. challenging how But, about the civil flying sir flying in the civil side oh flying in the civil side you know the flying in the bombay monsoons sir. because they are the most treacherous monsoon which sir. the fighter people and the transport people don't experience okay. helicopters okay. have to go through the worst challenging weather you know okay. we have to go through line squalls which are thunder showers or thunder storms which are aligned you know in your mm. path okay. and you have to wade your wade your way through that and okay. that flying with zero visibility right. and the helicopter you cannot even fly on autopilot you have to fly manually okay. in monsoon <laughs> in thunder showers and thunder storms around you have to fly manually and that mm-hmm. flying is the most tricky flying you can ever come across okay. nobody else you know american pilots joined our company and they sir. went back after one experience of monsoon and they said okay. you indian air force pilots <laughs> are crazy how do you fly here <laughs> yeah. okay and they went back they were scared to fly in indian uh, monsoons okay. okay and especially <laughs> monsoons over the sea you know they are mm. the most treacherous so such is the greatness of our air force pilots oh yes air force pilots <laughs> are definitely better yes sir definitely yes, sir. skillful okay sir so uh, okay sir well said and uh, what are your great learnings from air force sir indian air force great learnings what are the oh, things you have learned it's the best best thing that has happened to me that i joined the air force what we learned was being together being comrades you know with the same purpose of discipline and attitude to win yes sir yes sir you know and the brotherhood that we built up over the years all of us are brothers you know and we always support each other that, that bondage remains sir whether you that bonding about... remains for life yes Quite sir true. yes sir absolutely so, so then uh, how did you feel about our function in uh, pune sir small function we had Oh It's beautiful <laughs> that was beautiful i i give full marks to those people that is you mr fakhar mr sadbir you know all of you really contributed i must include uh, mr fakhar <laughs> son also who did yeah yeah you also there. There. yes sir yes sir yes, yes. Sir. that was a beautiful sir. function and we sir. felt great you know we must okay. have more like that how do you feel about hyderabad function sir okay oh okay. that was great also i mean you that was a gigantic function really i had soft to your organization your organization was great your uh, timings were perfect sir. and it was it was greatly appreciated by the public that was really so, nice so we are all uh, now taking taking inspiration from the people like you sir all warriors It's well, we did our bit. From- <laughs> we did our bit. We haven't done anything great. We did our <laughs> part. You know, we play, <laughs> played our part. So that's the inspiration. But no challenge. I mean, means putting your life also into peril and uh, bringing victory for the country is not a small thing, sir. Whatever the way it is, everybody has yeah. contributed towards the success. So we, I think, once again, salute to all seventy-one war heroes. Yes. 
So, <laughs> sir, what would be your message to all our air warriors on the call, sir? Message to us of life. I'm too small to give a message. To <laughs> there are people who are senior <laughs> to me who have done very well. And my 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 message, a kind of message, is like stay together, help each other, and remain with this brotherhood. So That's yeah, that is very much essential. Yes, sir, it's a yes. great saying. It's very Absolutely. much essential for us. So Absolutely. I think that whatever the bonding we have had in the service yes. and camaraderie, and that's also I think coming in handy now at this stage, even after leaving service also. Correct. to interact with each other and share our experiences yes. so that yes. we can share with the younger generations what all went through during those great years of our indian air force correct correct thank you so much sir in spite of initial hiccups you have shared your experiences <laughs> I, I, and uh, the the expressions you put in is really uh, fantastic as if you are witnessing the victory ceremony now pleasure <laughs> was all mine pleasure was all mine and thank you so much sir for joining us in this mini function at pune as well as the major function at hyderabad also so yes. it went on so well with the blessings of all the people like you and uh, we always uh, respect you sir and you deserve a lot of honor from uh, everybody from india that is there no. thank you thank you no so, so now we have other warriors sir like our as i said group of das sir and karnik sir they would okay. like to share some of their thoughts with you sir uh, group of das sir so we are grateful to both of them being the seniors and they have been regular in attending the calls and uh, okay. taking us through okay. sir okay yes, yes sir das sir now other uh, vinkam uh, karnik sir meanwhile you can speak sir i think das sir is finding some difficult yeah thank okay. you so much we are thank you oh. to you for your narration very nice enjoy the narration too yeah, yeah you are about 10 years younger to me <laughs> so but uh, each one of us has done our bit Wherever we are placed, and we are done yeah, our best to the best of your, our ability, and I'm sure your also execution of the task allotted to you, you have done so well that, and Thank we are very happy to hear your narration too, both during service and outside service. And I can imagine how it must be terrible to fly in Bombay monsoons because I'm a, <laughs> basically I'm a Bombay. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean. You require the highest of skills and bravery too, and gumption to go through that weather. Absolutely, so and every every time we went through that, we didn't know if we were going to reach the <laughs> coastline. Yeah. You know, the coastline. Yes, yes. Because I have flown in the, the monsoons also, but operating uh, from Pune and uh, going a bit deep into the uh, sea. And I know that, uh, but fortunately, we in our case, we fly <laughs> above the weather. Correct. Whereas you are in through <laughs> the weather. It's the in thing. the worst of weather. Yes. And monsoon is treacherous, actually. Treacherous. Treacherous. Full mark. Uh, because yes. Controlling of the aircraft and all that, full mark to you. Anyway, and I went through it for 35 years through Bombay <laughs> monsoon. <laughs> my God, my God. I met you in the Bombay, in the Pune function when you had come yeah, there. Yeah, I Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, I Do you stay in Nagpur, sir? Swaman, sir. Uh, I'm still in Nagpur, going back tomorrow. Okay. okay, okay. okay. Going back to Pune. Pune. Right, I sir. hope you're maintaining good health. Yes, I'm okay. I still climb Shivagad in 50 minutes. Perfect oh. health. No, no, good. Glad to hear that. Okay, every every best. Sunday I go to Shivagad. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, okay. You are staying in Pune, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Pune, but I'm staying in Asasi. That is the the senior city. I we call it senior city the home, but euphemistically we call it senior city the home because basically it's an old age home. Which so which place? Mix, uh, Baner, uh, Athashri Baner, Pen Card Club Road. Athashri, Athashri. Yes, that's right. Not not very far. I'm I'm staying in Baudham. Oh yeah, really, really, yeah. We must that's meet. Nice. We must meet. Yeah. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll okay. we'll meet. We'll meet if yeah. you can uh, just call me up. Uh, with uh, these people have got my phone number, and I'll be. Uh, I'll be very glad to host you in our uh, outfit here. Oh, oh no, I'm I'm too small for you people. No, 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 no one is big, no one is small. We are all yeah. in our own places. That mercifully done well, and still more mercifully is appreciated. Okay, all the best to you, huh? Thank you. Thank you.